Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Desmos to graph a quadratic function. And you know that when you graph a quadratic function you're going to get a parabola, so I'll show you how to do that. So once you sign into Desmos and you hit the Start Graphing, you'll actually get this page here, and sometimes this little keyboard will be down here as well. And that's kind of important because that'll help you out a little bit. So go to this upper left-hand corner, and you remember that a quadratic function has the formula y equals ax squared, right? And once you have a square, you know, you've got a quadratic or a parabola, right? And as soon as you put the square in there, you'll see this little thing called a slider, the A, and I'll show you what that means here in just a second. Now let's continue on with the rest of the standard form of a quadratic, and that is plus BX plus C. And you'll notice that as soon as I hit the A, the B, and the C, sliders show up for all of these. When I hit all, you'll see that all of the sliders all of a sudden show up, and they're all set at 1. Now I have a quadratic equation, or a function, that says 1x squared plus 1x plus 1, right? And that's what shows up over here. And this is what the parabola will look like. Now, let's play with this just a little bit. You know, there's a lot to do here, so I think I might break this up into a couple of different videos, but let's just start with the a. Now, if I start with the a and I just increase it, let me just move it over to 1. What do you notice is happening to the parabola? So as I increase the number, you see that the parabola gets thinner and thinner and thinner on the positive side, right? Now if I go down in the opposite direction, you'll notice that once I get past 0, at 0 it becomes a straight line, but once I get past 0 and negative, the parabola flips. Right? It becomes goes downward. I can also just hit this little play button and you can see that happening all on its own. Kind of fun. Actually, I'm going to slow that down a little bit. So you just go up here, you can slow down the speed of that. All right. So you can see how that happens. I'm just hitting the pluses and the minus. Okay. So let's just go ahead and stop that. Let's just move it back to zero. And I can just do it that way too. All right. Actually, I'm sorry, let's just move that back to 1. And I'm back to my original equation, all right? Now, what happens when I move the b? Let's just try that. When I choose b, you'll notice that the parabola starts to move sideways, right? Up and down. All right, so the vertex is actually changing. So when I go into the positive, it's moving to the left. When I move into the negative, it moves to the right. Okay, again, let's just go back to 1 and stop there. Now what happens when I move the C? Well, if I go to the positive direction, you'll notice that it keeps going upward. We call that a vertical shift. And when I go into the negative, it goes down. We call that, a again, a vertical shift, but going downward. All right, and again, I can play that. You can just see it moving up and down on its own, right? I can slow that down by hitting one of these two double arrows here, or I can speed it up by doing that as well. All right, let's stop that. Let's move it back to 111. So essentially what I can do here is just by manipulating the A, the B, and the C, I can really move this parabola. I can create any shape of the parabola that I want, and I can move it anywhere on the graph that I want. Okay, so that, uh, that'll be enough for now, and I hope that was helpful for you.